By Salas, by Salas' life. You know, it's interesting, a few years back, I actually started putting together photo books that basically separate each year of my life. Anybody out there keep photo books, right? Things that highlight, right, every year. And it was interesting, I was going through some of my photo books a few weeks ago, and on the inside cover, of every one of my personal photo books is kind of a, a mantra I've come to live by. On the inside cover, when you open it up, if you guys ever are at my place, you can see this. It says, the story of our lives are merely the pages of experiences we choose to create. You know, it's interesting because we, we all heard that word called life, haven't we? Right? And life, it's something that it's so broad, it can mean so many things, right? It can be interpreted so many different ways. My, my personal definition of life came from a very, very, very early mentor. Matter of fact, it was sitting in a restaurant, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in the middle of the conversation, he said, you know, Blake, at some point in all of our lives, we stop for a minute and look back. And for many of you guys, Maybe this will happen a few years from now, maybe a few decades from now, or some of you in the room, maybe this already happened for you. But he said at some point in our life, we all look back and realize that life is just a series of memorable moments, isn't it? Life is just a series of experiences that we collect. And I'm not talking about all our moments. Looking around the room, I know some of you guys don't even remember half of last night, let alone. <laughs> <laughs> let alone last year, right? Last decade or all of our life. You guys, we don't remember every moment. We remember the highlights, don't we? We remember the things that we attach emotion to, our first, the things that mean something to us. Those are the ones that we store in our mental photo album. You guys, I once read a sad fact. I read a fact that the average person has 60,000 thoughts a day. 90% of them were the same as yesterday. Think about that. How many of you guys know people that get stuck running motions? Life starts to turn into a routine. Does anybody know anybody that falls into that? All of a sudden, years go by, decades go by. Who wants to be the person when looking back on your mental photo album, all you remember are the traffic jams you sat in? The years, maybe even the decades, were all so familiar, so much the same that they got blurred together. Who wants to look back and have a storybook full of regrets from opportunities not taken or decisions not made? Ladies and gentlemen, who wants to have a situation where they just sit back and let life happen when you can be the one that makes it happen? Are you guys following me on this one? You see the Vaisalus, the Vaisalus mission of life is one of empowerment. It's one of what? Empowerment, it's understanding you have the ability to create those experiences. You're the architect. You're the one in the driver's seat. There is no puppet strings. You have the ability to create a life by design instead of a life by default. That's what we mean when we talk about life. And equally as important as the, the experiences we have are the people we have them with. Would you guys agree with me on that one? It's about the people, you know, it's interesting. Really recently, over the last couple months, we've attracted a lot of people with industry experience. And one of the things you'll hear in the side conversations in the halls, they say it to us all the time, is they go, Blake, it's weird. There's just something different about Vaisalus. Who's heard that before? You know, it's funny. Brian, Nick, and I, we sit back and we joke. We're like, we're watching the competition. Guys, don't get me wrong, the competition knows a Vaisalus wave is brewing right now, <laughs> right? And we sit back and we look around the competition and we giggle because they just don't get it. They're sitting there, they don't realize the magic of Vaisalus isn't in some bonus that we created. It's not even in black shiny BMWs, right? They're fun, right? The magic isn't even a challenge. The magic isn't even in our shake. You guys, the magic isn't in some three for free program. That's not the magic of Vaisalus, guys. The magic of Vaisalus is the people that make up Vaisalus. That's the magic of Vaisalus. You guys. Vaisalus is more than a company. Vaisalus is a community, isn't it?
It's not some logo. <laughs> it's not some brochure. It's not some website. It's not some cold corporate entity. It's not some LA office. Everybody look to the left of you right now. Everybody look to the right of you right now. Everybody look all around. That's Vaisalis. Ladies and gentlemen, who's Vaisalis? We are. Who's Vaisalis? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Looking around the room, I can, I can think of so many experiences. So many experiences that have been able to, how many guys have built relationships already that you think will last a, last a lifetime through this company? How many of you guys think it's a little bit cool looking around the room that you know have friends pretty much everywhere, right? I mean, come on. I, lo I love the process. Where's JP? Is JP in the room, right? Alaska in the house, right? I remember finishing a training in Alaska. Had a few hours to kill before I took off from my flight, right? And, and JP took me up to the top of Flat Top Mountain. There we are, all, everybody's there in like their igloo clothes, right? We're in suits, trying not to slip in the ice and the Ferragamos, you know? Like, Going up there and saying, oh my gosh, watching the, the ocean, the glaciers, the Kenai Mountains, I mean, all of it. I mean, talk about an experience. Where's Bridget and Scott Reed? Are they in the room? I remember Indiana a couple months ago after an event, had a chance to stay over the weekend, right, and actually experienced my first race, the Indy 500. All, all I could think about when I was sitting there was what they taught me in North Carolina. I was like, get her done! You know, that's like... <laughs> An experience, right? Where's Lonnie? Is Lonnie? Where, where is that? Lonnie is like perma stoke, you know? Uh, I remember watching Lonnie come out for the transformation vacation, grin ear to ear. First time he'd been in Beverly Hills. First time he'd been in a five star hotel. First time he had a spa treatment. First time he rode in a limo. First time he had a photo shoot. First time he was in a luxury suite. You guys, it's about creating those first time experiences. How many of you guys, this is your first time in Orlando by a show of hands? You guys, give them a round of applause. They're creating an experience. Tom McCoy, Dr. Paul, watching them strap on skis for the first time in like a decade. <laughs> Poor Paul didn't even have ski pants, he was wearing jeans. <laughs> Charging the hill at our Rocky Mountain retreats. Yes, I'll admit, Tom, when you started doing cartwheels and poles started to fly and you turned into a snowball going down the hill, I got a little bit scared. But you know what, he created the experience. You guys, it's not about sitting back and just running a routine. I don't think there's anybody in here that's gonna be happy with the one vacation that somebody else says you can have a year. It's not about doing what we're supposed to do. You guys, my personal belief is when you stop doing what you're supposed to do, and you start doing what you were truly meant to do, that's when the script in and life really begins. Where's, where's Amy Lehman? Amy Lehman, one of our leadership retreats, shows up to the welcome reception, face beat red, tears coming down her eyes. Everybody surrounds her and goes, Amy, what is wrong? This is an amazing, what's wrong? She said, this is the first hotel I've ever stayed in where they had a robe on the back of the door. I never thought I'd stay in a hotel where they gave us your own rope. Sometimes it's the little things, isn't it, everybody? People ask us all the time, they go, how in the world can you guys work so hard, do so much for so long? You guys, my question to you is, when you know you can make such a dramatic impact on somebody's life for doing something so small, my question is, how can you not? You guys, there's so many experiences I can go on all day long, but there's one person that when I heard this story, I was like, that just embodies life, and I asked her to share it with all of you guys. I think she's in the audience right now out of Ohio, presidential director. Can I have Danielle Blevins come up here to the front? You guys, give Danielle a big, big, big round of applause. So good. I got you here. Hello, Vaisalas! This has been one hell of a ride for me. It's been up and down, but it's been fun, and it's changed my life. I want to tell you where I started 
with this. October 31st was my sign-up date. Before that, I had a husband walk out on me. I was a stay-at-home mom for seven years, two little kids, no job experience, had a house to take care of, two babies to provide for, lost 10 pounds because I was starving myself so my kids could eat. I had nothing at all. I hit rock bottom. I went to bed at night praying to a God that I didn't even believe in, that I wouldn't wake up the next day. I did not want to be here. I looked at myself and I hated everything I seen, all of it. The day it hit me, I had 50 nerve pills in my hand. Took two of them. And by that God that I know that does exist, a picture of my two kids fell at my feet. And I knew that was my reason. That was my why. And I got on the computer, hopped on Facebook like everybody does every day, and saw a little verb about something changing your life, and I needed it, and I didn't care what it was, but I needed it. And my friend calls me up, and I sit on the phone for, with four day, for four days with Jeremy Gilchrist, crying, making every excuse you can think of. I was the queen of excuses. I had every one. I had all that baggage, and it controlled me. I let my circumstance control my life. I didn't make my circumstance. Jeremy Gilchrist, Jason Silverthorne, Amy Lehman, all of my people in Ohio helped me believe in myself. They taught me how to love myself. He taught me what friendship was. He doesn't even know it. He taught me what being a mother was, what it is. This is the best time in my life. I come from a very small, hick town. My dad drives a tractor all the way around. We didn't have much, but we had enough. When I hit national director, I went on the national director experience and I stood on the nicest hotel in Beverly Hills, the Montage, with these three guys. It was like nothing to them. It was something they're used to. I stood there and I watched Kyle Pacetti look at me and saw me crying. Jason Silverthorne came up to me and he said, Danielle, are you okay? And the only thing I could respond is, Jason, where I come from, where I grew up, we didn't know how to believe in this. This doesn't happen. But it did. And everybody in here, whether this is your first time, fifth time, tenth time, your life's going to change this weekend. And something's going to hit you. And Vaisalus is the vehicle, whatever your goal is, how small, how big, whatever it is, everybody in here is going to get their montage moment. It can be in the pyramids in Egypt. I've seen some pretty rad pictures of what these guys have done. Mine's the montage. But I know that I'm going to have more. And it's going to be some pretty cool places. And then my two little kids are going to be right there with me. And my life is forever changed. Because of love in myself, I fell in love with somebody that really appreciates me, that appreciates my kids, that knows where I was because he was there too. And it's changing real lives, real people with real problems. We all have them. I had them yesterday. I'll have them tomorrow. How do we deal with it? Control your circumstance. Don't let your circumstance define you. When it comes to Vaisalus, there is something different. I'm going to let you guys in on a real sincere secret. Here's our magic sauce. We sincerely care. You see, this company was built on raw passion. It was built on a passion for people and a passion to create something for those people. That's what the mission of life is about. It's about the experiences. It's about the people we surround ourselves with 
It's about the journey and the process. And you guys, when it comes to life, I'll leave you with this understanding, because the reality is all of us have our own bank of time. All of us have our own bank of time, and you know what? It has a finite capped amount of resources, and every day we are not allowed to make a deposit, but we are required to take a withdrawal. Every day we take 24 hours, don't we? Every day we withdraw 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds. Every day it is gone. And you know what? We can't do anything today to change yesterday. We can't buy back our past, but you know what? What can we buy back? What can we buy back? Vaisalis, are you guys ready to buy back your future? Are you guys ready to create your experiences? Are you guys ready to create new relationships? Vaisalis, I have one question for you. Are you guys ready to live? Yes or no? The, uh, you know, the, the cornerstone of our, our company, the foundation of our company is our products. And it's the health that we're able to provide to people. And, you know, I got to learn early on, on the journey of Vaisalis when we first started, that I would get these testimonies back from people that talked about how their lives had changed as a result of the product. And as an entrepreneur, that's about the best thing you can wake up to because you know that the work that you're doing by offering the product to one more person or by talking to one more family member that maybe directly or even indirectly through a referral of a referral of a referral, you're actually making an impact on people's health. You know, uh, uh, early on in my life, I was, I was taught that your body should be treated like a temple. And the better that temple is, the better you can serve. And later on in my journey as an entrepreneur, I learned that health was the only asset or my body was my only asset that I couldn't replace. So I started investing in it, and I started you know, really taking my health seriously, particularly when my, uh, uh, my dear sister was struck in with uh, rectal cancer. And I got to see her go through radiation treatment and chemotherapy, and I, you know, I got to have the family conversation about what would happen to my nephew in the event that she didn't make it. And I know many of you in this room here have, know what it's like to have a family tragedy as a result of, of health. And I know many of us right now are hearing the popular news stories about obesity as an epidemic and you know, all the various information that's out there in the public about how bad the state of health is in America. And what I see that as is really a, you know, a state of, of our existence as a society right now. What we need to do is focus on our health, and that's what this company is about. Every life experience was created by health. All of the prosperity that you hear of, the, the income, the opportunity, the stories is all because we are helping people live a greater life and they have greater health as a result of that. Our motto as a company is it's not how much you have to lose, it's how much you have to gain. I remember I was 260 pounds. Some of you guys won't believe that. And you know, I didn't have uh, major problems, maybe a little self-image issues or you know, lower back pains or you know, uh, you know, different nutritional related issues, but you know, you think about what do you have to gain by putting your body in its optimal health so that it can serve, so that you know without guilt that you are doing the best that you can for yourself. And that is a duty to your family, especially in this day and age when many a times it takes two incomes to serve a family, when it takes longevity to provide for a family and you know that you're doing the best you possibly can for yourself, and that's doing the best you possibly can for your children. Having a newborn son, you know, I know it's my duty to, to have the ultimate health and the ultimate vitality that I possibly can. And that's what our company's about, and that's what we've engineered our products around. Everything that we've done is purposefully to help it make it easier so that you can live the greatest health possible, so that your family can, so that your community can, so that eventually America can. We hear all this rhetoric by our politicians about health care plans, right? How come no one talks about a health care prevention plan? I mean, many of the ailments that we suffer from can be prevented. Many of the things that, that uh, plague our society right now, the, 
compounded prescription drugs upon drugs upon drugs just to get through the day. A drug to wake up in the morning, a drug to cope with the day, a drug to go to sleep at night. I mean, how many of you know people that are in that cycle right now as we speak? You hear it every day. Another person lost a prescription drug addiction. You know, that is the state of our health right now. And for us, and I believe it is our duty as, as citizens of this great society that we live in, this modern day of technology, this age where we have the information. We can no longer, you know, say we didn't know. We know what the cost is and what the ramifications are of having poor health to our family, to our duty as Americans, to our duty as citizens of this globe. We have to take our health back. And that's what Vaisalis does. That's, that is the solution. And I'm going to tell you this, throughout this weekend you're going to hear a number of stories, but know this, that the work that you can do as a distributor in Vaisalis, and, and you're going to hear a testimony one day, knock on your door, and you'll never have met this person, and they'll tell you, you changed their life. And you'll sit back and you'll reflect and you'll say, I changed your life, how? And they'll say, well, they'll tell you a story like the one I'm going to bring up here. I'd like to bring to the stage a very impactful story that really inspired me. Uh, Barbara and Stacy Johnson, if you're out there, will you please come up here? sharing your story. I started with Vaisalis just shortly before the Denver event, thanks to the Buntings, Nicole Bunting, my best friend in the whole wide world. <laughs> and that event changed my life because it changed the life of the most important person in my life, my mother. The entire event, we were asked to think of our reason why. And the entire weekend, the one person in my mind was my mother, who has type 2 diabetes. And the entire weekend, that was the only person that I could think of was my mother. And how, how the, all the testimonies affected me and how important this is that I share with her. And on the last day of the event, Jeremy Gilchrist asked us for three minutes to think of our reason why. And the tears were flowing. And I knew at that moment, right after the event was over, I had to drive the hour to Fort Collins and see my mom immediately and take the energy that I had gotten from that event and change her life and her health so that I could have her around for a lot longer. Because she's always believed in everything I've done, no matter how crazy it is, and I knew that she would listen to me. <laughs> So I did it. I called her on the way up and I said, Mom, I'm on I-25. I'm coming up. And I was bawling. And she's like, what is going on? I said, you just have to wait. I'm coming up because I want to change your life because I love you and I care about you. And I'm going to let her tell you what happened. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to be here. This is so <laughs> awesome. I just want to tell you that. <laughs> Stacy walked in my door that night. She hugged me and started crying, and I thought, what is going on? I knew she'd been at the Vaisalas Convention. And so when we finally got settled down, we sat down and she started telling me about Vaisalas and was so uh, enraptured about all of the lives that she saw changed from the people talking just like I am right now to you. and. Um, she showed me the products, and I thought, I've got to do this. Um, I'm a big girl, and I've always kind of been a big girl. I'm also a chocolate-holic. <laughs> Yay! <Yeah. laughs> but um, I got diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and I couldn't believe it. And in November, first part of November, my doctor said, Barb, you have to go on insulin. I had fought it and fought it. I said, okay. I had to learn how to give myself a shot, you know, and it just, all the horrible things. I, I don't like diabetes. I'm not a good diabetic, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm not good. Okay, anyway, um, I'm 
I'm rambling, I'll try not to ramble. <laughs> um, so I started on the product mid-March and mid-April I went to my doctor and had you know all the blood sugar tests and everything the doctors make you go through. He came running into the office, you're a rock star, you're a rock star, and I'm going, what? <laughs> all of my um, sugar levels, my triglycerides, my cholesterol levels were perfect. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so he said, what did you do? So I handed him the little media pack. <laughs> and I said, you have to take time to go through this. This has changed my life. So anyway, um, as I was going through this period of time and doing two shakes a day every day, my blood sugar started dropping and dropping and dropping. So it was getting so low some mornings, I was panicking, talked to my doctor, he said, start lowering your insulin level. I started at 32 units of insulin in mid-March. Um, after I went to my doctor and he, he said, just I'll trust you to keep lowering your insulin level. Um, I started not taking naps. I decided I better clean out my garage. Uh, <laughs> um, started playing golf after 20 years. <laughs> I direct this amazing choir that you see pictures of. Um, that takes lots of energy and it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm working out and I could go on and on. To make a long story short, June 18th, I emailed my doctor my blood sugars. By then, I was down to five units of insulin. He emailed me back and he said, Barb, I don't want you to take insulin anymore. And I'm off insulin. Yes. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. That's an amazing story. So as I said, it's not what you have to lose, it's what you have to gain, right? That's what health is, and that's what this company stands for. And it all starts with the person that you try to awaken the health conscious of, a person that you interrupt in the middle of their life that you see going through a tough time or that you know is making some decisions and they need to be enlightened to the decision that is Vaisal's, to do join the challenge and take their health back. And look what this family gained as a result of that one decision that they made from this one event. That's the definition of the work that we do and that's the definition of health. Prosperity, as defined by Vaisalas, is three things. Number one, it's having the financial resources personally for you necessary to do the things that you want to do. Number two, after you achieve that, it's paying that forward and spending as much time working with the people that have helped you achieve that to bring them to where you are. It's helping them succeed. It's helping them cross the finish line. And prosperity to us is also that level of contribution, that level of giving back and touching your community. See, Blake talked about life experiences. He talked about the things that you can do, the places that you can go. But of all of us are readily um, knowledgeable that there's two major resources that you need in order to have those types of life experiences at the greatest level. To be able to travel the world, 
to be able to have your dream home, to be able to spend the time that you want to spend with the people that you want to spend it with. And that first resource is finances. And that second resource is time. The great thing about that second resource is that it can be purchased with the first one. See, it's not about the money. It's about what the money can do. And not just what it can do for others, but what it can do for you. What it can allow you to do. Who it can allow you to impact in your immediate circle, in your immediate family. And then you begin to think about those that you can make a difference in their lives by mentoring them to become a successful entrepreneur. Prosperity is about entrepreneurship and being a teacher, being a mentor, and helping others achieve the things that they want to achieve. How many of you know someone very close to you in your life that you would want nothing more than to help to lead them down a path to greatness and allow them to see them achieve the life that they always wanted to live. Who, who knows those people very, very closely in their family? It's also about that organization, that charity, that foundation, that church, that you have the ability to make an impact on. Because I know all of us, if we'd had more, we would do what? Give more. How many of you would give more if you had more? <laughs> See, prosperity is the key resource to do the things you want to do, empower the people you want to empower, and support the organizations or the people and donate to those that you want to support, uh, excuse me, that you want to give support to. When I look around, and especially these front two rows here, I see the people that are achieving prosperity on all three measures. I see uh, prosperity being defined in this front row right here, these first two rows as taking a $100,000 debt and erasing it through this company. I see prosperity in just these two rows as being a, a mom that was gone every day at work to now become a stay-at-home mom. I see prosperity in these first two rows as a, a mom who had her first child and decided, I don't want to go back to work. I see prosperity in these first two rows as a, a lady that decided to take on the task of bringing hope to a country. I see in these first two rows a lady that just wanted to have a little bit of extra spending cash because, you know, her husband said, it's time for you to uh, tighten up on those credit cards. And at the same time, I see in these first two rows a husband that now can pay off those credit cards. <laughs> I see a, a couple in their 70s that has the ability to now do the things that they want to do long after their career has ended and their retirement has kicked in. See, guys. We here at Vysalus, we provide that vehicle for you to have true prosperity in your life. And all of you want different things, you want to impact different people, and you want to do different things with your life. And those key resources are time and money. And we can get you time, but we have to go to work to create the income. There's a gentleman in this room that I want to invite up to share his story. It's one of those true rags to riches story. And he's had a uh, direct and indirect impact, a ripple effect on many lives in this room just over the last nine months. And he's now a one-star ambassador. Please help me welcome to the stage Mr. Jeremy Gilchrist.
Hey, Vice Alice. <laughs> if someone would ask me two and a half, three years ago, would you speak for our million, multi-million dollar company turning billion dollar company about prosperity, I probably would have said I can't. Because I drive back home to an air mattress between these three walls that I lived on and for seven months and I would blow it up every hour to keep it afloat. Yeah. I tried wax for the holes. I tried tape. I tried all these things until I realized one day I just kept sinking back to the bottom. And I didn't have a choice. So how is it that this was only two years ago I could go from that to a 980,000 square foot loft in downtown Columbus overlooking a city, right? <laughs> people, hanging out with the right people, a choice to just do something different because sometimes you put yourself in a position where you just, you have to do it. But the people were the biggest one for me and a simple, simple idea he talked about yesterday because I didn't know what to do with myself anymore. So I came across this company, left the air mattress when I finally got back home, moved back to Ohio 16, 17 months ago, met some good people, upgraded to a hotel that was $33 a night. Three weeks ago, that's where I was living. No one knows that. But in there, we had a mirror, Jason, didn't we? We had a mirror and a marker. And after three last days of this month, a $25,000 check sits in a hotel that's $33 a night. Interesting, isn't it? I learned how to save it a little bit. So I left that hotel and I shopped and here we are at this loft. I never, I never dreamt I would ever live in. And when I, so when I'm sitting here earlier, I'm thinking how, what was it really? What was it that occurred? It was sheer choice to do something different because I ran out of breath. I realized I was putting more energy, this is just like life, I was putting more energy into blowing up this mattress and patching these holes and trying to cover up all these different things. As weeks go by, months go by, things go by, you're out of breath, I have nothing left to say. That's what might happen. But luckily, you guys are here. That's a good thing. These guys came into my life, and this was my option, and I had to take it. So I put my energy into the people, into the things, and this is what happens. Prosperity is not money. He's right. Because without prosperity, I wouldn't have had the time to meet Danielle and be there. She's talking about worry about food. I remember living in Denver, walking seven miles to a McDonald's because I already hit the other three to say, I don't have money, but will you give me some food, right? But it was a whole different story two years later when I could talk to Danielle and here she is. Well, there she is, right? And when you get the time freedom, and I can't wait to go on a trip with Doc and Scott, just us, and have the party for the, for the sisters. But my point is this, if you're gonna take energy, put it into something that works. Don't keep trying to patch up the things that don't work in your life because you'll just keep sinking right back down here. And someday, you're just gonna have to stand up. Okay? Stand up. You're gonna have to stand up. You're gonna have to throw these air mattresses out. You're gonna have to throw the patches out, throw them out. 
So that two years later, instead of thinking I can't speak about it, when Blake calls and says, would you speak about prosperity? Nick, Ryan, and I were wondering. You'll say, I would love to. Thank you. See, guys, prosperity is about doing the things that you want to do. How many of you guys have things out there in your life that you want to do? Let me hear if you got some things. It's about having the things that you want to have. It might not be a, a, a one-bedroom hotel to your first giant loft. It might be your three-bedroom house to that house in the hills that you've been wanting so bad. How many of you guys have some things out there that you need to check off your list that you need to acquire through prosperity? Prosperity is about taking somebody with you. It's about empowering others to have what they want to have and do what they want to do. Who has a list of people that they're going to take with them? Let me hear you. And prosperity is about making a difference and making a contribution. Like our community challenge that is now over 250,000 children's shakes served on our way to a million, and who's going to help us go to that million number? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is the definition of prosperity.